Well, hello everyone and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV travel, RV living, and RV lifestyles. So grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, relax, and let's talk about RVs. Hello there everybody, this is Rob and welcome to episode 58 and yep, I'm still doing shows from a motel room and I'm still using the microphone that kind of picks up all the noise around me so I apologize, but what can I say? I do want to talk about weather in different regions. Stay tuned. Well, I have to admit, I'm suffering from a cute case of the grass is always greener on the other side. <laughs> it's just, ugh. So, I, um, you know, I've been down in Arizona, and you know what I've been talking about. It's hot. It's hot. Every show, it's hot. I know, I've been saying it all the time, and I know. You know why? Because it's hot. So, anyway, <clears throat> so, you know that uh, I'm up in Washington right now, so it's uh, actually, like, 80 and hitting 90 up here and they're all whining like crazy He's like shut up yeah 90 in arizona right now would be a miracle but anyway the thing that's killing me is you get up here and i gotta tell you that when summer hits and when the weather is gorgeous or, or clear up here there is no better place that is so beautiful with all the water, the wildlife, uh, there's really not many critters that really make this uh, intimidating. It's this beautiful landscape, beautiful area to live, and nice temperatures, no humidity at all. It's just in green. Oh my gosh, green everywhere, green, green, green. And uh, so you know, you sit here and go, God, why did I leave this place? Um, and you get more and more homesick. But, you know, uh, there's always the dark side. You know, uh, I know, because I've lived here all my life, that fall will be coming, and it's going to get cooler. And it's still not bad, And it's, but the rain will start a little bit more. But fall here is also really beautiful. And I'm talking about Seattle, the western side of the Cascades. And, and even in eastern Washington, I mean, there's this... The colors start coming out in the fall, and it's, you know, I'd say, up to about October, the beginning of October, and then somewhere in that October, the transition starts to change, and by November, it starts graying up here, and it gets dark and dingy and rainy and rainy and rainy and rainy and then the next days there's more rain and more rain then maybe one day a little bit of blue sky and then rain and rain and rain and it just goes on for months and it's gray skies and etc of course that's what makes this place stay beautiful however um what i do miss is the fact that it does get cold but not freezing cold cold you can still do stuff you just gotta dress appropriately and uh, um, but if you're used to a place that has a lot of uh, openness or blue skies or brightness to it and you come back up here um, you can literally get a little bit depressed and uh, um, I mean it's not right now you get here it's like woohoo this is the Northwest but I gotta keep telling myself just remember what's gonna happen it's going to be at least six months of gray, dingy skies and rainy, rainy weather and just kind of, eh, you know, function stuff. But there is a benefit to that because now I want to talk about, of course, where I, uh, I come from. And I, I don't live there, but where I'm at right now, which is Arizona. Now, I got to admit, I mean, uh, Arizona right now has kind of stopped me in my tracks. I mean... All you can do is hide in your RV, pray that the air conditioner doesn't break down, <coughs> which it hasn't. But when you open that door to say, let's send her out to go potty or, or go outside, maybe I have to go to the office or something. You open that door and that 100 and 105 degree weather hits you in the face. And I got to tell you, 
you don't last long out there. I mean, at least, I gotta say, in colder weather, even rainy, rainy weather, you can still function. You might get a little wet, but you can still do stuff. But I gotta tell you, for me, this Arizona three months, which is only for about three months, is a stop me in my tracks kind of deal, and it's kind of getting to me. It might be why I told my wife I gotta have a boat. I need something else to keep me busy or a reason to get out of the RV and go up north a little bit in cooler weather so I have something to tinker with or go fix. <laughs> you gotta, you know, it's a boat, so you know I'll be fixing it. So anyway, so, um, and yeah, and by the way, if you haven't been watching the videos, yes, we bought a boat, so if you want to know more about the boat, just watch the videos, it's, it's going to get hilarious. But anyway, um, so here we go with the grass is greener thing. Now also, remember, about September, Arizona starts cooling down a little bit. So one thing I can tell you for sure is I can look forward to about eight or nine months of summer-like weather. Summer-like weather. While all those folks where I come from will be starting to get into the rain, the cold weather, and some other areas and other parts of the country, they're getting darn right snowed on. And, and some people, I mean, you can function in snow too, and there's lots of activities in the snow too. So it doesn't like keep you indoors. But I gotta tell you that three months of Arizona heat at summertime, um, I mean, you, you can still do stuff, but you're, going, you're jumping into the car, firing up your air conditioner, trying to find places with air conditioning. And the bad part right now is I can't hardly do anything with Cinder, our dog. And it kind of bums me out. And, uh, uh, I mean, even to take her to the little dog park to go do her thing at, you know, 100 degree weather out there, she's, uh, you know, she's doing all right, but man, she poops out quick because it's just too darn hot. And then, um, uh, I know she's definitely comfortable with the temperatures that we're having up here at Washington, but nothing lasts forever. And the same thing in Arizona that you, once you get through those three months, I do have a lot of gorgeous weather. And, and the reason I'm taking our boat down to Arizona is I don't have to winterize it or anything and we can literally go out to these lakes and still go swimming and stuff in the fall and winter time uh, yet yeah, cooler but not freezing and so there's so much um, opportunity especially with the boat uh, we're looking at taking it down to Lake Powell I've got a lot of places I've heard that are just gorgeous to go to that you can get to by boat um, that we sh I'm really hoping to pick up some really fantastic photography and I'm looking forward to taking grandkids out there and stuff and this boat's gi gigantic enough to handle more than one family gi giant swim step off the back and the kids can have a ball and, and the dog can jump off the back with them and they can just it's kind of a city slicker boat not like the fishing boats I've had in the past but that's okay if I need a fish so bad I can throw a fishing pole off the back of a little <laughs> this whole thing so well anyway there you go grass is always greener we're never happy i guess the bottom line is learn to live with where you're hanging out and and if you don't learn to live where you're hanging out then i guess that's where snowbirding comes in huh <laughs> anyway get win there you go there's my comparison of grass is always greener at the other state So you may not know this, but did you know like two and a half years ago we had a drone? Yep, we actually got on the drone bandwagon way before all these other drones started showing up. And uh, uh, I could see the writing on the wall uh, really quick and um, got rid of it actually about six months after I got it. And uh, the reason I did that is I'm is there's no doubt in my mind that having a drone and the photography that you can get is uh, outstanding but then the stupid people came along and now you can't fly them in national parks and now you can't take them to parks and I have a dog that's sneezing in the background sorry <laughs> anyway and you can't fly them in a the city and you can't go by an airport which really makes sense 
and uh, um, it wasn't like that when I first started, but I could see the writing on the wall that these things are getting dreaded, and now you got to register them with the, st uh, with the FCC. But yet, more and more RVers are buying them, and boaters, too, and the sailboat people use them, too. And uh, I, gotta, I, I know that some of the shots that I've been seeing are irritating the heck out of some people. Um, they, they're, they're not uh, spying. They can't really... I mean, there's, if you notice all the uh, pictures you see from drones, you can't make out license plates, and you can't make out people that well. And, and so, and, and they're, you know, nobody's looking in your windows with them. And uh, so, write that off is, but they are kind of irritating. And, uh, uh, and I'm starting, maybe it's my age, but uh, I personally too like to get the good shots, and I want to make sure I got a good shot of my RV and or maybe my boat or something. And I might get one in the future again. Some of the new ones now are getting quite affordable. But, I just see the writing on the wall. I don't want to invest very much money in another one because uh, more and more people are going to do stupid things and someone's going to get it into an airplane engine and you just know what's going to happen. It's going to uh, really crack down. And uh, I, I don't know where it's going to go, but um, <laughs> it's kind of like this uh, uh, e-cigarettes. Uh, I personally think they're a great thing, but you know, uh, because they're selling so well and not regulated, uh, uh, like the cigarette industry and stuff, um, more and people are trying to block it and tax it and all that other thing. So, hey, anyway, I think it's going to be a good thing go bad pretty soon, and it's because of a small handful of people that are not responsible enough to take the time to to think it through before they shove one of those things up in the sky and irritate everybody. Uh, and, and certainly uh, fly them in a place where they could cause a safety hazard. And I tell you one thing, if one of those things uh, hit a building, started falling down and hit somebody in the head, I'm telling you, that will um, uh, that'll start causing a couple lawsuits. And then, pretty soon, these little uh, drones they were flying, we're all going to have to have million dollar liability insurance for each one of them. So, and, and probably some kind of permit and some kind of registration. It's just going to get deeper and deeper and deeper. So I don't know what to say about them other than it's kind of neat. It's nice that we have them right now. If I get one now, it's to enjoy the benefits of having one now because I know I'm going to lose my rights of what I can do with it in the future because of a handful of really dumb people. So... <laughs> I know. I, I think I'm turning this into a ranting channel. Anyway, I apologize. But anyway, uh, drones, I, I'm, I'm starting to see more, and I watch a couple more channels, and there's like more drones, more drones, and uh, and they are cool. There's no doubt. I love the pics, and I love to get some of those pics too for some of the stuff we do, but I don't know. Uh, is it worth the sacrifice? Eh, it's kind of up to you, but I know you guys enjoy seeing them, but I know you don't like being around them. All right, just food for thought. Well, I want to talk about Cinder a little bit, or pets. And I'm kind of bewildered a little bit, trying to figure out. Now, you know, uh, I have Cinder with me on this trip. And the reason I brought her is, like, I just feel like that she's been, like I said, I've been talking about this hot weather. And we've been locked up in the RV a lot. And I thought, what a great trip to bring Cinder. Now, i got to tell you, it's not easy. Because many of the places we go, even up here in Washington, it's kind of warm. I cannot leave her in the car. Very rare can I, can I, I, can, can I do that. Because uh, I can do it in the evening when it's starting to cool down. Which cool down significantly here. Uh, Arizona is kind of hard to do. But what I'm trying to figure out is if Cinder gets homesick at all. Um, in fact, she's <laughs> jumped out of the bed and came over because I've been saying her name so much. And it's kind of curious. It's like, is she? We're in this really teeny tiny little room. And uh, just getting a good price on it. Tomorrow, I think this is my last day at this motel. I actually pick up the boat tomorrow. And I start 
the long journey of getting it back down south. And cross my fingers, everything goes well. But uh, I'm just kind of trying to observe, observe her. Um, whether she's homesick or not. If she's missing her familiar smells. Uh, her familiar places to lay down. Um, in some cases, it seems like she does. And some people say, well, quit trying to put emotions on your pet. And I can't tell, you know, for example... I've, I've ranted about this before. Some doctor or something came out and said, dogs cannot remember things. And it's like, you look at your dog or even your cat and ask yourself, do they remember something or not? And I think somebody's... Uh, they're trying to say it's a different concept of how pets remember things. But um, occasionally, Cinder acts like she's like, um, just kind of hanging out, don't know what to do with myself type of thing. But, uh, <laughs> she's not acting like, I don't know if she, has, if she has any way of indicating to me that I miss my home. I do know that she definitely, being a Labrador, uh, really loves all the new smells. And, uh, she's definitely stimulated from all that. Of course, you know, we're driving, she's just laying in the back seat most of the time, and she'll sleep for about an hour and then pop up and tap her uh, paw on the, on the door saying, roll down the window, Dad, because it's usually up because i got the air conditioner on. And um, she gets her air, whatever it is, even if it's 100-degree weather, lays back down again. She's good for, like, another hour as we're doing these long drives. It would be amazing to figure out, are they bored are they just knowing that they gotta write it out because they know there's a treat at the end? Uh, are they homesick? Uh, I don't know. I just keep looking at her and trying to figure out, and I, I keep applying human emotions to it, I guess. But I don't know. What do you guys think? Does your uh, pets feel like they're out of place when they're not at their home? Um, of course, Cinder. You know, we travel a lot, so Cinder's kind of used to different surroundings different smells but she's always had the RV as her uh, neutral territory and right now for the next two weeks there's not a whole lot of neutral territory except Central Oregon when we stop there she's got the big yard to play in and she recognizes it uh, maybe the truck is a neutral territory to her so she feels comfortable uh, being around me um, gives her a comfort so the rest of the outside stimulation is okay but I don't know. I, I don't know why I want to bring this up, but it'd really be interesting to hear some of the comments that come in about: Does your pet get homesick? Do you think some pets have emotions? Do you think uh, they have to have a pattern in their life? Just like people say, "Well, we have kids that travel." Well, and everybody says, "Well, kids should have a pattern in their life. Some something that they um, a rhythm." Is that really true or not? I don't want to stay with pets, though. Uh, and I, and you can talk about cats, too. I, I, I don't care. Uh, some people actually have birds and some other critters with them. So, anyway, um, do pets have emotions? I wonder. Guess it's time for me to answer the big question about the boat thing. And the question is... Rob, you've been looking at sailboats for the last two months. Why did you buy a powerboat? <laughs> it's like, we were really looking into it. In fact, we got certified. We told you we got certified for uh, uh, basics of sailing. And because it's it was on the uh, checklist of uh, things to do before you die type thing. So we did it, had a blast, loved it. Then we went to San Diego, of course, and did a two words just to see if we really really did like sailing and we thought we'd really start diving into it and really learn what's going on out there and if it was for me and sherry and the answer is it it is for me and sherry but not now and uh as much as we'd like it to be so you know yes last uh, show i complained about things that made sherry and i not a senior not a good traveling RVer. Uh, we're RVers. We're full-time. We're RV life. We're RV lifestyle. But we're not traveling. And it's because 
we have a ball and chain on our feet and, and I've explained to people saying we retired had a chunk of chain set aside sorry about the phone and uh, uh, thought we'd hit the road for a while and things changed and so Sherry had an opportunity to do some stuff in uh, Phoenix so we headed on down there which also gave us a uh, normal what you call health care through her work and kept our costs down and kind of made us put the brakes on for a little bit so we're kind of determined that we're probably going to have the brakes on until we get into our 60s, which is about nine years from now. Yeah, bummer. <laughs> and maybe we'll find a way or a different approach than what we're thinking right now, but the health care is a big thing. I know I've been complaining about it, but it's the cost. Um, I'm sorry, but 1000 to 1200 a month and a 6000 or more deductible just kind of makes me cringe. And so, I know, suck it up, somebody says, suck it up. Anyway, but uh, I don't have to right now. We're just doing it this way. So, we really do miss boating. Sherry and I have boated for years and years and years. So, we thought, let's do the next best thing. Let's go ahead and get a boat, spend a lot less money, get one that can be like a vacation. So, this is kind of like what we did with the RV before when we were in an apartment we kept our RV full time at different RV parks so when the weekends came we went to the RV to enjoy it where it's located so we could do activities in our favorite places so voila we're saying well we don't you know we can't do the sailing right now and we we are short on time you might say on the weekends so sailing is a, a is a hobby of patience and uh, maybe we're not there yet however let's do the next best thing we've never boated that much in these big reservoirs like uh, Lake Powell and Lake Mead and they have some beautiful things to see and so what a great opportunity uh, to get a boat that you can sleep over for a couple of nights uh, has a stove and a kitchenette and a refrigerator and air conditioning and um, and it's got two power plants in it so I have kind of a backup engine and it has a dinghy with a motor too so it's kind of a third you know of all those fails a dinghy you can tow us to his back <laughs> anyway and the investment is a fraction of what we were to spend on some of those big sailboats we were showing you so once again, just like the RV, uh, same thing with the boating. Uh, I think when we get closer to our 60s, we'll take the boat that we have that's a power boat, trade it in or sell it for uh, whatever we can for, and then apply it to a sailboat when we have more time on our hands and maybe we could even go cruising for a few months and, and go see things we never had a chance to see. Lord knows I am so envious to see these people that can do what they're doing or even like the winds are going to go and I know that what they're going to be doing and uh, power to them and uh, you know there's also a lot of sacrifice you're not seeing when people do that kind of stuff uh, or even do uh, RVing before uh, in their younger years there's sacrifices being being made you're just not seeing it and uh, if you really if you're as old as I am think it over and say all right uh, they've got to be giving up a few things or there's something we're not seeing and I and then I've seen the other side of the coin where I've caught up with some of those people going yeah that explains it so anyway I know there's another thing of grass is always greener on the other side or somebody's life looks more exciting than yours but anyway uh, that's what Sherry and I are doing we've got the boat now as another outdoor uh, resource for us to share things with our viewers and that's why we change our main channel to outdoor travel channel so we can show you RVing traveling and things on the water so uh, we broaden our our scope a little bit and just you know uh, a lot of people get really niches like I just want to hear about RVs but Guys, we want you to see this other stuff too. We are RVers. We're using our without our RV, we can't do this stuff. And now uh, we have a power boat, 
that will allow us to go to cracks and crevices and some of these beautiful uh, reservoirs that go in the canyons and stuff like that and be able to show you some great photography in some great places that you may never get the opportunity to go to because you don't have a boat well we're fortunate because we have an RV we could afford a boat to go do that stuff so anyway in relax people enjoy we hope that we can present some really nice stuff for you to view and that's why we got a power boat and not a sailboat and in the future there probably will be a sailboat it's definitely a fun uh, hobby and uh, <laughs> adventure that Sherry and I would like to do someday but for now power on the water guys Well, you know, it's part of that time for me in the show to have you guys contact us and send us your notes and comments, good, bad, or indifferent. Um, last week's show was great. I had some uh, feedback that kind of annoyed me a little bit, but in a good way, that uh, gave us uh, some great subjects for the show. So we definitely appreciate it. So uh, the way you can contact us is go to... Uh, RV Talk Radio, go to the contact page and you can write to us right there. Nobody else sees the note. Uh, you can email me directly at rob at rvtalkradio.com or you can go to our Facebook page at either RV Travel Buddy or RV Talk Radio. They both have their own Facebook pages. Go to the very top and it says message. If you send us a little note right there, that actually goes straight to our cell phones. We see that note immediately and try to answer you as soon as we can. Now, if I'm driving or something, I'm not going to answer you right away. So anyway, don't hesitate to uh, contact us. Uh, if you want us to identify you on the show, let us know. If not, we don't say your name. And uh, uh, we do appreciate it. Um, I think one of the big things that I wanted to make sure that people know is like we get all kinds of notes about oh, motorhomes are better than fifth wheels, and fifth wheels are better than trailers, and trailers are better than campers. And I think I want to make sure that everybody knows that I feel this way, and I hope everybody else does, is first of all, any RV is a good RV. <laughs> Number one. Two is, we all need to just be grateful that we have the opportunity to get an RV or have an RV. Not everybody has that opportunity. Uh, even like with the boat thing is like me because we keep our overhead low we're allowed to get another toy um, not everybody's in that situation things are different so I think I just want to take the time to say I am grateful for what we have and hopefully we're grateful for you guys for our listeners we're definitely grateful for all the great uh, comments we get and like I said some of them like to rattle our cage a little and that's good uh, as long as it's done tactfully and if it's something that really uh, uh, is more private like some of them I got in the past uh, they send it to me in a private way and I really do appreciate that and then uh, <laughs> I think last week some people uh, suggested that it sound like I was mad and it was like no I just uh, I, I had stuff rolling in my head and, and I really wanted to um, discuss it more and uh, but and then uh, you know I play you know like the person that wrote to me goes I wasn't mad at you and I go I like I knew that it just you know this is a radio show so we kind of ham it up a little but anyway it was it was great feedback and we appreciate it so um, and uh, all I can say is that the person that said that unsubscribed they're gonna miss out on some really cool stuff it's your loss <laughs> so you know, go ahead, subscribe. Go ahead, you can do it. I won't tell anybody, I promise. <laughs> anyway, uh, anyway, time to move on. Also wanted to take the time to apologize to those people that uh, are probably wondering why the sound is the way it is. Uh, if you didn't catch it on last week's show, uh, I'm in the field, you might say, I'm traveling. And so I'm doing these shows from motel rooms, and I got a microphone that's kind of good for being portable. It's a nice microphone, but it's designed more for like rock bands and stuff where it picks up all the sound around you. 
And so every little sound like cinder and the cars going by outside, I got the window open. I know you're hearing that stuff, and I apologize. I'm just, just grateful I'm able to get a show out to you. So uh, anyway, um, uh, if you're wondering why, if you've listened to older shows, and <laughs> you realize, man, the sound the sound doesn't sound as good. as I, I know that. So um, just got to, uh, before I get hate mail or anything, just like, guys, I understand that, but just be happy we're able to get a show out. So uh, anyway. It'll get better. I think next week I should be at my uh, studio again, so we'll be set to go. Well, due to uh, my crazy agenda and trying to get some videos out before uh, the uh, night's over with, uh, I'm going to have this show be a little bit shorter than normal, which I apologize Next week, I think I should be at the studio. We'll have our normal notes out. We'll get some more uh, uh, finding out what everybody's up to in the RV world and get caught up. I'm behind. I'm behind. There's a lot of videos I haven't seen. Um, I haven't caught a lot of uh, the. Sh I don't get a chance to watch as many videos as I used to, and that's kind of stimulates a lot of conversation some of them drive me crazy and other ones I just really admire and do great jobs so uh, anyway a lot of times they inspire a lot of things we talk about and then a lot of times I'll have to go out and do some research and uh, find out some numbers and things like that but anyway uh, I guess the big thing for next week is I hope I live through it I'm actually kind of scared just like anybody would be when they're buying a new fifth wheel or anything like that I've got to pull this really big trailer for a long ways and um, I'm really worried about the safety and, and uh, how different, I mean I pulled a fifth wheel for so long I, I think I've forgotten how to pull a, a trailer. Anyway, I, uh, it is a um, triple axle trailer, uh, a little wider than I'm used to. Anyway, it should be quite the challenge and I'm kind of crossing my fingers and I hope everybody kind of puts a prayer out there for us to uh, be safe and uh, let us get from Washington to Arizona safely. So anyway, I'm Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio. Thank you very much for listening. I'm looking forward to seeing you in episode 59 next week on Mondays. See you then. Bye now. Thank you for watching our videos. Please take the time to subscribe and consider being a Patreon supporter. There is many more adventures and some big surprises coming in the future with your help. Thanks again.